Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. We are doing a reaction video today. Do consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, follow me on all my socials so you can tag me in anything you see online. But slightly questionable. And as I always say in these videos, I don't, but I try to remember. Creativity and individuality have no rules, but makeup has a theory. I influence you to not waste your money on one thing. Let it be this. The algorithm got me and this kept popping up everywhere. So I caved and I bought it. I guess it's called Turter. Turter. So it is a foundation. It's like a sponge and it comes with this and you're supposed to apply it with this. So I did shade 24 in Latte. I have no idea if this is even close to my color. Also, my lips got sunburnt and I had a blister and it's finally Ooh. healing. Oh, that's really bad. Ouch. Okay, here we go. So you're supposed to pat no, it on there. No, no, no. It's like, it's like on. Oh, oh. And then from all the videos I watch, you just pat. Now, wow, a little goes a very long way. I think I can do my full face with what's on this sponge right here. You can do two and faces. This is definitely. I mean, I don't know, maybe once I add all the other stuff, the color might be okay. Look at that coverage. The color's oh my not goodness. okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just continuing to pat, 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 pat. That's A the wrong lot shade. of, or majority of the ones I follow on here, or see all their stuff, I don't even follow half of them. It's all like 20 year old skin. We are working with a 38 year old canvas here. But sorry, I'm, I'm just going to pause it as I go through because she she says she's 38, but incredible skin. So smooth and nice. I'm 35. I'm wearing a cushion foundation right now. It works. There is no beauty filter or anything on here whatsoever. I don't know if you can tell, but you can really see like... It's because it's too much. Lots of it. For, if you were to use a liquid foundation and you put in your skin like that with a sponge like that, you'll be like, oh shit, that's too much, and you'll probably try and get rid of some. We don't apply normal foundation like this, so why do we do it like this, you know? Texture through this. I don't know if it's my skin or if it's my skincare. I had to get the beauty blender out because I can't work with that little thing anymore. Like, there's no way to get, but I'm committed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust the process. That is as blended out as she is gonna get. <laughs> so. The colors. Not I will say the color like, ended up being fine, and I think once I fine. get everything else on, it'll be okay. But it's I'll doable, come back but it's and show you guys fine. the final face. So I went ahead, finished my face. Nice. I will say the turter is an earner. Yes, yeah. Like you can see everything. It does not hide anything. It's already creasing in different areas. Do not like the way the texture of my skin looks at all. But I committed. I thought, let's see if it gets any better. Did not get better. It's an earner. So I have done a full video on how to apply cushion foundations correctly. People keep going in with lows. This is a full coverage foundation. If you pat layers and layers of any full coverage foundation on your face, it is not gonna sit well on your skin. It is gonna struggle. A small layer, build it up, and then go in with a little bit more. Also, a lot of people are using their pads. If you haven't watched, if you have watched my cushion foundation video, I'm sorry for the repeat. But a lot of the, this is a different one. This is from a brand called Amuse. A lot of people are using the pads like this and then they're tapping with this really loose pad and the tips of their fingers here. You go into the compact once like this on any of them and then straight onto the skin. Sometimes you can't, this is dirty because I just use it, but sometimes you can't even see the product on the sponge, but there's loads on it. You start around this area first for the most untextured part of the face, and then go into the middle here. And when you're tapping, it needs to be direct, con like a beauty blender, you tap it on the skin, like you, you, the whole base of that beauty blender is touching the skin. So you need to be using that curvature of your hand to push like this. It's not this, like some people do, and it's, it's, it's this. You don't have to do it hard, you don't have to do it fast, but once you do it right, it looks good. Oh God, not him, okay. The science of beauty, male versus female contouring. I think about facial balancing all day long when I'm doing aesthetic procedures, so let's talk about it. For females, you probably- Aesthetic procedures aren't the same as makeup. It doesn't work the same, even in contour. In my video, going from the tragus all the way over to the nasal ala, and then from the eye 
down to the corner of the mouth. And that intersection right there is where you want the maximal prominence of your cheek to be. So the contouring goes below there. No. Is that the female side? No. That gives you in indented cheeks like this and can actually, along with other makeup when you highlight, make the face look very masculine, right? The thing with fillers and our natural faces with no makeup on is lighting can infill the depths of our faces. So if I had a bright light on this side of my face, you wouldn't have any shadow here. Whereas if I had makeup right there, it is a permanent shadow, right? It doesn't come and go with lighting. We've literally technically drawn it on our face. Yes, lighting can fade it out slightly, but it's always going to be there. So if you are to contour there and, and do this kind of shape, it is extremely, extremely masculine. Masculine. You see drag kings do it. For the male, let's talk about it. So for our men, the male makeup is a thing. Go from the pupil down to the corner of the mouth. And connect that to the tragus right there. And then you connect those lines. And that is actually where the prominence for the male cheekbone goes. But the contour, but the ideal contour for the male cheek is higher and more medial than the female side. It's a foundational principle for using makeup for facial balancing. Okay, I gotta go watch this. That wouldn't balance your face. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't balance your face because in makeup as well you have to think of the length of a face, the roundness of a face, the, the height of the apples of the cheeks, the proximity from the eye this way in to this way in. It, it's not the same, it does not work. Everything this guy says when it comes to makeup and apparently skincare too is incorrect. Everything he's said, I have debunked. Science of beauty. How to use your concealer. Oh, and I have to say, he says science of beauty. It being a science, the science of makeup, the theory of makeup, he is getting it incorrect. To look younger, smarter, and more assertive. Makeup can't make you look smarter or assertive. That's a personal opinion. <laughs> Not that's not my. I mean, seeing someone as assertive or seeing someone as smart is an opinion. You look at someone, oh, they look smart. Opinion. They might be stupid as fuck. As we get older, we tend to look sad, mad, and tired because the upside down triangle of youth over here turns into a pyramid. The triangle in makeup is also a thing, but you use it in highlight points. So you highlight the, your lips, highlight above the brows there or the cheekbones. So there's triangles everywhere. In makeup, it's more of an aesthetically pleasing thing, like it is in architecture, like it is in art, like it is in design. Close attention to two subtle details. Over here, the upturn of the corner of the mouth. Over here, it's downturned. Similar to the eyes, upturned, downturned. And multiple studies have shown that these subtle differences have a big impact upon how you are perceived. And so to look younger, smarter, and more assertive, this is what you do. You want to make sure that you're highlighting the under corners of the mouth. I would love to know how it makes you look smarter. Okay, watch watch this bit and then I want to show you something from a previous video I did. So the mouth, corners of the eyes, and for my men, around the nose. That can be for women too and it's nice just to fill out this little area here. That is the science of beauty for highlighting. Incorrect. <laughs> Incorrect. Where are you blending it to? Where are you blending it to? The highlight areas depend on what else is happening on the face. Last time he highlighted around his mouth, he said that to lift the mouth area, you have to highlight above the lip here which I pointed out in my video, that's incorrect. You can, that will actually make this area look like it's coming forward, therefore shadowing underneath, which is gonna give you a downturned look like this. I'm Dr. Charles, I'm a dermatologist. I help keep you healthy and beautiful. And I want to show you where people often neglect to highlight. Take a look at that picture up there and notice the corners of the mouth on that young person. They are upturned, right? When we smile, they go up. Now look at the older person, notice the corners of her mouth, they turn down. Now with gravity and repeated motion of the depressor anguli oris, our smiles turn down, it gives us a sad appearance. Now I do this with filler all the time for my patients, but you want to eliminate the shadow on that side. And so you should be highlighting the corners to upturn the vermilion border right there. Let me show you what I mean. A little bit of Minar's foundation. Now it's going to be subtle, but I promise it does make a difference. So if you highlight the corners of the mouth, it gives you more of that natural, youthful upturn. You want to eliminate the shadow that happens as we get older. All right, I'm Dr. Charles. I'll see you next time for more Science of Beauty. Again, I disagree. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about depth. And even, he, again, he said himself, when you have something light in comparison, something next to it looks dark. If you have something dark in comparison, something next to it looks light, even without using product. When we put something light here, whatever's underneath it, 
looks darker, lower, deeper. So if we're trying to lift a mouth in makeup, we cut off with a light here. So we almost do, I wanna show you what I mean. So we want when we want to lift a corner of a mouth like this, we don't lighten above it. I can't see it, oh my God, I really need glasses. We sculpt this way. Like how we lift the eye, we lift up like this. Not because it's like tapes and it's gonna lift it, but because in comparison, this looks darker. So it's gonna look like we have more of a, a lift up this way. If we highlight above that, can you see immediately that looks more downturned? So you don't want to you don't want to do that. You don't want to highlight here because you're going to downturn the mouth. Even on sta stage makeup is really good to look at because when they're aging someone in stage makeup, they will leave that area light. The area he suggested to 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 do it, they'll leave lightness there because it makes the bottom of a lip look heavier. So it's really not the best thing to do when they fill lips with filler. Yes, they do it in this kind of area, but again. Filler and makeup aren't the same thing. Makeup, you are physically adding a physical shadow, physical color. You are like drawing on a different facial structure, not physically making one. So he is contradicting himself here by saying that that's how you lift. You would lift that, but highlighting there would lift slightly. But if I was just to do a dot of highlight there, again, it's not gonna make that bit proceed out like this. You have to drag it in a direction. You have to cut something off to make it look lifted. The science of beauty is kind of contradicting itself there. Will he never give up? Okay, ladies, <laughs> listen up. If you're 50 or older, stop wearing liquid makeup, liquid foundation. Stop. It doesn't look good. It's probably the wrong color, but it, it just doesn't look good. What? Okay. I'm gonna show you things in my videos that are way better. And you know, if, you're, if your makeup adds a lot of moisture to your skin, like a tinted moisturizer or something like that, that doesn't look like makeup, then I'm all for it. But stop wearing foundation. It shows up in the creases, it shows up, it ages us, okay? It doesn't look good, all right? Take it from me, it doesn't look good. I'm gonna show you things that look better. In the meantime, take your liquid foundation that you love and mix it with your moisturizer oh, and no, turn it into that. a tinted moisturizer. Don't do that. You don't need that much coverage. That's extremely, extremely outdated. We have many, many, and I'm not saying because of an age thing, even from when I started doing makeup, we have many, many different variations of foundation textures to when we did back then. Can I just say, please never mix your foundation with your moisturizer in terms of longevity, unless you have really dry skin. It, it just, it's not, and it can change your color also. He, uh, can, okay, can I just, 50 or older, I did a video on uh, mature skin or this guess my age trend on TikTok where we saw that people in their 50s don't necessarily have mature skin. An age range, although it can relate to a skin type, it doesn't mean just because you're 50 you have mature skin. Mature skin is something like d d fine lines, deep set wrinkles, um, age spots, things like that. Just, a lot of people in their 50s don't have that. Liquid foundation in terms of what? because there's many different liquids formulas, there's many different liquid finishes, there's many different liquid textures. This isn't a case of we're just choosing between Estee Lauder and Clinique, you know? Why would it be the wrong color? Why are we assuming it's the wrong color? What a strange thing to say. Although a lot of people do just buy yellow foundations nowadays, why are we just assuming it's the wrong color? This is very unusual. I completely disagree. And from looking at his page after he said, I'm gonna show you some things, I don't really see much proof of that. Um, you can absolutely, and I have done, use liquid foundations on people in their 50s and over. It depends on application, it depends on texture of a product. You can't g group every single liquid foundation together and be like, don't use liquid foundation because you're over 50. There are some people in their 20s and 30s who you would look at and be like, mature skin. As a professional makeup artist of over 10 years, this is my biggest pet peeve when it comes to the way that most people do their contour. When you can turn to the side and very clearly see that you have a big brown dark stripe on your face. The first mistake that a lot of people make is actually applying foundation that is the same color as their body or their face. I know this sounds like it goes against a lot of what you've been told about foundation matching, but what happens when you do that is you have to go in with a contour that's much deeper than your skin tone in order to make it look like you have a shadow on your face. So to combat this, I'm going in with a 
lighter tone for my foundation and actually doing my contour with a color that's much closer to my skin tone. This is what's called reverse contour. And the areas of my face that are lighter create the contrast that these areas, even though they're the same color as my body, appear darker, making it look like these areas are receding. And you can see by doing this, I'm able to sculpt my face in a way where when I turn to the side, you can't really see what I've done in order to create this effect. You've probably seen a lot of people take a very light concealer to the center of their face in order to achieve this effect. However, it's much easier to darken up a light base than it is to lighten yes, up a dark base. Thank because you. you'll oh find that you have to use a lot of concealer <laughs> or a concealer that's very, very, very light in order to achieve this effect. This way, you actually use a lot less product and the skin looks a lot more natural and luminous and less makeup y. Secondly, the concept of contour is that it's supposed to mimic Shut a shadow, up. and a shadow only exists underneath things. So when you're applying your contour to the hollow of your cheek like this, it's like your contour is existing on like an open field. There's no trees or anything to cast shadows. So that's why it looks really unnatural. Contour needs to hide under something. That's why a lot of people will tell you to practically apply your contour almost onto the underside of your mm. cheekbone, not into the hollows, because the cheekbone is protruding in a way that a shadow can exist under it. And just remember to always blend your contour into your hairline and not to bring it too far in because otherwise you're going to look like you have a five o'clock shadow. And there you go. That's how you seamlessly sculpt a face like a professional that is super undetectable unlike this. Oh, I love that. I did a video recently, well, like a reel or like a TikTok about when people tan their bodies, right? But they leave their face because maybe they don't want to sunbed their face or they don't want to put fake tan on their face because of texture, how it works with a foundation, skin texture, it can look a bit patchy. And I explained how how I would go with my my face shade foundation in that sense where it's dark body, go for the lighter face and then bronze up matching this. Everyone's like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? This is, this is why. Because then you can add other things and it looks more like depth rather than just you've whacked something on. Because then you would match your tan, go in with a deeper bronze and then it just looks like stripes of products. This is your sign to not use a chili yeah. lip plumper. Um, yeah, I don't deal with spice very well. So I don't know why I thought this was a good idea, but yeah, oh my God, this hurts so bad. Uh, you can see how well it started to work here, by the way. They're looking super plump and juicy. So yeah, the hack actually does work. Like, look how big they look. And through my tear-filled eyes, I'm posing here, but couldn't wait to get this off. Literally, look how sore they look. Uh, so yeah, try it at your own risk. Yeah, no, yeah. So of course there are lip plumpers that claim to have like chilli in them or maybe have chilli in them. It's a controlled amount, right? It's not just a chilli whacked on your lips. Some chilies are very strong. They can be exact same chilli from the same tree and have different compositions of what they are. So you can't guarantee a safe or same result every time you use a natural product. Chilli and a lip plumper work by aggravating and irritating your lip to a point where the body panics, the lip panics, and it plumps, it sends blood to the surface and it plumps up your lips, something like that. So when you're rubbing a pure chili on your lip, that's a reaction your body's gonna have is to panic and be like, oh shit. So I guess it will plump, not in the safest way possible. And like, what's her name, Sydney there said, um, through tears, it's gonna be quite painful. <laughs> So I think this might be why people think I'm like really angry and rude because this is my face. I'm editing a reaction video. This is my face while watching some makeup that I like. <laughs> this is my face of approval while watching someone do nice makeup. I don't know. <laughs> 
I look so disgusted and I'm not. I remember watching this thinking, oh my God, that looks really, really nice. And I've just come to edit it and this is my face. Love that blush placement. I love the lip pencil, beautiful. One thing I would question in that is using a product like Milk of Magnesia, is that, that's what it's called, which people use to prime the skin. I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe on like drastic times where you really need to be matte for a long time, like um, you're a guest somewhere, don't use it like on your wedding day or anything because it does look terrible. Um, but it, it like stops a lot of oil from coming through. But one thing that would completely counteract that is a product with a lot of hydration, like the BB, um, the new BB foundation from Kosas. So that, that would be, what's the word? Um, non-beneficial um, in terms of a product application and having that product work a long time. But in general, that was a really, really nice application. Brown mascara with blue eyes like that. Were they light blue or gray? beautiful brown around the eyes in general on light uh my fucking eyelash is pointing out always happens um on on bright eyes looks phenomenal ready browns on the even the deepest eyes that are almost black looks incredible okay all right well thank you so much for joining me do consider subscribing give us a video a thumbs up remember to tag me in things if you don't feel comfortable tagging me in message them to me and i'm sure i will find them i'll see you very very soon bye